Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming along. Train's running pretty fast right now, so glad you have time to hop on. And yes, I've been on a roll, but sometimes you just get kind of focused, and I got a fair number of new pens in January, and this is one that I showed in my January pen compilation video. So now we're going to dive in a little bit deeper to the Trommel. Trommel? Trommel? Uh, I'm probably the worst pronunciator in the world, as we know. So, uh, aesthetically, I like the pen. The matte finish has a very good feel to it. You know, there's a little bit of uh, friction to it. And I have so many clear demonstrators that I wanted something different, and it does come in matte or transparent. Here's the eBay auction that I uh, got the pen from, and it came very quickly before the Chinese New Year and before the current virus outbreak. So I was lucky in that regard. The cap comes off in... about one and three quarter turns, so it's uh, under my two turn minimum. And we see a nice matte finish section here. Standard number five nib. Yeah, it's a fine, and it looks like it's really a fine nib. But we'll see if that's something that can be easily replaced. A black feed, and it still surprises me that a uh, more and more uh, pen makers haven't gone to a transparent feed, especially in a pen that looks like this. It fits fine in the hand unposted. That section is a little on the small side, but it, it'll work. And it doesn't post very deep at all. It makes it very long, but this is a very light pen. You do feel that cap. If you like a pen that posts deeply and securely, um, this one probably isn't for you. Here I've disassembled the uh, Trommel pen and it completely disassembles. I didn't remove the cap finial to show the clip could come off, but it obviously does. It's shredded in there. Just a standard converter, but it's the design that I like with a, a little insert in there that will make it seal up better against the end of this nib assembly. It's a standard number five nib, so if I don't like the way this one writes, I have a whole bunch of options. From a uh, Delike bent nib, to some stubs, to some medium nibs, to a Knox broad nib. So, I'm not concerned about the writing style. This nib assembly, like we've seen before, is a proprietary design. Delike doesn't fit, Jinhao doesn't fit, so... Um, you know, I wish they would standardize on those, but then Yovo and Bach didn't, so can't ask for too much. The resin is very well finished. That matte finish is very consistent. No need for the LED here because you can see everything. No cap liner and no ridge in there that a lot of pens do like Pen BBS. So it, uh, one may question whether this is going to seal up well. Yeah, nice O-ring above the thread, so obviously we'll silicone grease that. And the uh, nib assembly also has that one O-ring at the top and one at the bottom. And that's in a nice groove, so that's good. That's all she wrote. I decided to compare it to these two transparent pens that I have. So you can get to see the difference between a clear pen and, and a matte finish pen. This is the Moonman C1, and yes, I have a, a few of them because I think they're phenomenal pens. And I have this fear of losing one, which I don't do, but still doesn't get rid of that. And also, you never know when I might uh, find a nice person who needs a pen and this one might be the pen for them. Next to that is the Pen BBS 491. 
which is a, another great pen from PenBBS. Both of these have those black feeds in it, so it's not unusual for a clear pen to have a black feed, but PenBBS only uses the same black feed for basically every pen that they make, so you can't fault them. And it's nice how the machining is done here with that little conical design element here. It's mimicked in the outside in the C1. There's a very flat thing and you can stand it up on your desk if you like. And the caps are uh, somewhat similar. The Trommel has a clip which makes it different from the other pens and the other pens aren't designed for clips at all. The uh, 491 posts very nicely, which is good. So posted, we could see some of the challenges. Uh, this Trommel just doesn't post deep at all, so it makes for a very long pen. The 491 posts a little bit deeper, but still not real deep. Not like a 266-308 would or a 352 would or some of the other pen BBS models and of course the C1 doesn't post at all. Let's look at the sections. The uh, Trommel has a number five nib in it and a smallest section of this group. So that's its downsides. Considering it costs more money than the pen BBS pen it kind of gives it a little bit of a knock from from my perspective and of course the C1 is a pen unto itself nicely designed section and I do like the color of that section and it does come and varies from kind of more red to more purple and different versions in between you get whatever comes out when they ship it to you and there's a nice number six medium rounded medium nib on the pen BBS pen which is so these two I know have exceptional nibs on them I don't have high hopes for the Trommel nib but I have a lot of options if I don't like that nib the nib is branded Looks like they took a generic iridium tip nib and just put their name in there, and it's an F for fine. We're going to do an eye drop fill on the Trommel pen. So we have the necessary instruments, a um, hypodermic needle with this long blunt needle, good for reaching down to the end of a bottle, the bottom of a bottle. There's an ink I haven't used in a long, long time. I have the barrel in this nice ink miser container, which is good for also sample ink things. I have my section with the O-ring and those threads with silicone grease on it. So we're going to open up the bottle. So it's a full fill on the hypo. Now we're going to go to the barrel, insert the hypodermic needle down into the barrel and Fill it from the bottom all the way up. And took about four milliliters of ink. So that's a good one. We'll put that in the bottle and set it aside to be emptied and cleaned at a later time. And I touched a little bit of ink on those threads, so I don't want to get that in there when I screw in the section. So I lose a little paper towel to get those off. So now we're ready to go. Insert the section. Engage those threads. The O's ring is in front of the thread, so that's a nice bit. Feels nice and tight. So there's no ink here in the section and feed, so we need to put it upside down and let it flow into that section. It usually takes about a minute or two. So we're going to set that aside and let it saturate the feed. One of the things that KWZ does along with Pen BBS is they put a date on their ink bottles to show manufacturing. So I'm reading this is September 10th of 2016. Uh, I'm using the European dating method. And of course that's me putting gummy berry on it. And it's a 60 milliliter bottle. Here's a color card for that gummy berry ink. It was very popular a couple years ago. Here's the uh, 
standard chromatography. Pretty much purple. There's a little slight gray there at the bottom. If you let it dry for a few hours and do the chromatography again, it looks very similar, except this dark gray area is bigger and it's uh, darker and the ink spread a little bit less. So this is my experience with Iron Goal. Yes, it does have some water resistance, but the color of the Iron Goal ink generally spreads like the color in any other ink. There's just some residual left over from the Iron Goal that bonds to the paper. I've had the pen for a few days now, and I pretty much shot the video a few days ago, but I noticed something that I didn't notice when I was doing the filming is that the finial on the cap is not matte. That very top is a clear finish, and you can compare it to the bottom of the barrel, which is matte. It's a subtle difference, and obviously the ink in the pen doesn't let you see it as clearly as you would without the ink, but is that a design issue, or did they just forget the matte? that top of the finial. Yeah. It's a question you can give me an answer in the comment section. So if we're ready for the writing, overall <clears throat> this pen has left me kind of lukewarm. I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other. I feel that I should, but I don't. Um, there's nothing overall wrong with this pen. Um, that ink color looks nice in there. Yeah, this thing is going to be inked up for a long time. Yeah, the cap comes off with a reasonable short amount of turns, less than two. Fits well in the hand. That section's a decent size. I would like it a little bit bigger, but um, I can live with it the way it is. It's light. I like the way that color shows through in that solid piece at the end of the barrel. You know, post high, but it's not something I would do on a normal basis. It does change the balance, even though it's a light cap, but because it's posting so high. So this is a pen I would probably not post unless I had to. I mean, it's a relatively smooth nib. It has a decent amount of feedback, especially on this Fabriano paper. But it doesn't do anything for me. It's a blah nib. I don't usually do reverse, so let's see what reverse is like. Eh, it's smooth and it's an extra, extra, extra fine. Not something I would do on a regular basis. It does lay down this ink very, very well, which is, is kind of what I'd hoped for, but not expected. So let's rate this pen. I'm going to give it an 8.2. And I'll give it one check for the look and the design. But uh, other than that, it doesn't float my boat. So design. We're going to give it two checks. Engineering is two checks. Build is two checks. Writing is two checks. I'll call look three checks and value one check. So that's how we got to our ranking of 8.2. To me, for the price of this pen, there are so many other pens out there that I think work better, look better, and cost less. Yes, it is a kind of unique, and this is a pen that might appeal to you, but unfortunately, not on my hit list. So we've come to the end of this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, and a look at a pen you may or may not know existed before. 
Trommel seems to make a few other pens that are for sale on Etsy. And on here's an example of one I found from Chinese pen on Etsy. Again, they seem to be kind of higher priced in, in the Chinese pricing uh, scheme. And to me, that kind of lessens his value and that nib is just not exciting or anything to write home about. And yes, I can swap it out for other number five nibs, but I'm trying not to do that and trying to review the pen that I received and if you bought it that you would receive. So thank you for watching. May you have many wonderful writing experiences and just get your rocks off putting ink on paper and that's what it's all about and having a nice instrument in your hand to to do that with. So this is the end for now and then we're going to say bye until the next video and I do like this ink in this pen.